Throughout history, various inventions have become a reality through the creative efforts of people around the world. And one which stands out and has a swift current connection is Blowtorch, the mechanical horse. In 1947, local businessman and machinist W.J. McIntyre brought the now famous blowtorch to life from this sketch drawing. Constructed from sheet metal and a nine horsepower motor, blowtorch was made life-size, standing approximately six feet high, complete with a mane and tail made of real horsehair. Moving on wheels, and operated by a pulley system directed by the rider, Blowtorch could move up to six miles per hour. Over the years, Blowtorch would go through several aesthetic transformations and was a common entry in local parades the 1950s and 60s around Swift Current, with several out-of-town appearances at the International Trade Fair in Toronto and the Grey Cup Parade. Blowtorch became a household name, creating excitement for all ages locally and worldwide, spurring interest from Reader's Digest and Time magazine. There was even a song written in Blowtorch's honor and was rumored to have caught the attention of Walt Disney. Further transcending Blowtorch from a mechanical invention into the world of pop culture and folk art. Folk art is, uh, is, is artwork that comes from people who are just folks. It's, a, it's, a, it's authentic artwork that's, that's made by just people who are producing expressions uh, based on their own experience. They might be decorating their home, they might be uh, making ornaments for their yard or their celebrations throughout the year, that kind of thing. They, it starts out with a, a kind of a purpose. I need to make something in order to recognize this or to celebrate this or just for the enjoyment of it. And they aren't making it with the knowledge that they are making art or with any great purpose uh, in, in art expression. Blowtorch is a folk art work because it was produced by community members who had a purpose to make an expression. In so doing, the result is a sculpture and a monument and an expression relating to culture and heritage and in every way works as, a, as an artwork and therefore is a folk artwork. Twelve years ago, Mr. McIntyre designed and built this mechanical horse that can really walk, trot and buck. Following the death of W.J. McIntyre in 1965, Blowtorch's public appearances were now a thing of the past, and it was left in storage. That is, until 1967, when a young Alan Jacobs came on board as a welder with Jim McIntyre. As the legacy of the McIntyre machine shop continued in swift current, so did the rebirth of Blowtorch. The horse sat between the two buildings. There was a, the building was built actually in about three different sections. Uh, and they had to put another addition on the back and there was a little space between where you went from one building into another kind of like a lean-to on the side and that horse sat in there but the water had run down and didn't have a very good roof over it was between buildings and uh, I saw it there at least a year before he decided he wanted to put it in the parade so he he asked me if I was interested in fixing it up, so he pulled it out of there and we started. Alan Jacobs and several other staff members spent numerous hours transforming Blowtorch into its third and current version from its rusty and worn exterior. We worked quite quickly on it because uh, when we may have fixed it up the way it originally was if we had more time, but we didn't, so we, some of the things that operated in it, we we discontinued them because we couldn't get the bearings free that were in there, they were seized. So we just cut some of the shafts and some of the things that were mobile in or out. When we brought the horse out, it had a few dents and stuff in it and we straightened out the dents. And then we had to discontinue some things 
and like the seat had moved up and down so it was going like it was walking. I think we had to take out some of that stuff, uh, put a saddle on it. Uh, I think the head moved and I think we had to take that part of that system out and, and that's I think why the head fell off later because part of the things that attached it weren't there anymore. So after we got all the repairs done to it, then he decided, told me to go ahead and paint it. And I thought it was black and white. So I painted it black and white. And then uh, Jim McIntyre come out there after I had painted and said, Alan, it looks like a Holstein cow. <laughs> I said, no, there's black and white pinto horses. He said, I don't think there's any black and white pinto horses. But I've found some since then, so there are. <laughs> Once the restoration was complete, Blowtorch was ready for its public appearance, complete with its original motor and freshly greased bearings and belts. The horse had a Wisconsin engine inside of it with a, a lever that pulled the belt tight. So the harder you pushed it, the faster the belt ran to drive it. It had gears inside and like a crankshaft to run the legs and uh, it didn't have any seals in the bearings. They were all open bearings. And I believe the bearings came from, he built grain augers and he had the gears and the bearings from, from grain augers. And I think he used those pieces to build that horse. And because the bearings were open, they didn't get lubricated and they rusted up. Uh, so that's, we got the ones that we needed working to make the horse run. The horse didn't walk. The horse galloped, so two wheels went uh, forward and then they locked and the rear wheels pulled forward and they locked and they pushed the front wheels forward and so that's how the horse moved. But uh, you had control on your foot pedal on one where the stirrup was on one side. You pushed the lever to make it engage in the gear to get going or to stop. And during Frontier Days in 1968, Allen rode the glorious blowtorch, making his way through the parade route along Swift Currents downtown towards the south side. Jim McIntyre said, we're gonna go over the overpass. I had thought it would go down to the east intersection and cross, but he said, no, we gotta go over the overpass. So I wasn't sure whether the horse could make it over the overpass. We didn't do a trial run. So when we got about two thirds of the way up on the north side, there was an expansion joint in the, in the uh, bridge there that uh, allows the bridge when it's hot and cold to, to fill the gaps. So when I got up to the expansion joint, I tried to make a decision whether to go fast or go slow. And so I just went as fast as I could and I got the front wheels over, but the rear wheel, one of them caught in that, in that expansion joint there. So then I had to make a decision whether to get off and try get it off of it or try drive it off of it. So I just held the pedal to the bottom and it bounced and bounced and bounced and it shook so hard that the, the, either the bolts or the rivets in the head came loose and it fell off. I ended up getting off anyway, uh, but it had a bridle on it. And so I went over there and got it and put the head back up where it belonged in the back half of the bridle I held on the solid part of the neck and finished the ride over the overpass. The good part was that once you got to the top, you didn't have to have the gas pedal going down the backside, it coasted. So it, and that was a good part for me. I didn't have to fight with a head. <laughs> it was kind of funny. There were not, it was not in the heavy part of the crowd. There were a few people around there, but when I got off, the engine was still sputtering there. So and finally it died there. And so then I had a, a toy gun there, so I just went over and pretended I shot it. And there were lots of people laughed at that. <laughs> in the years to follow, Blowtorch continued its public appearances. In the late 1970s, the McIntyre family decided to donate him to the Western Development Museum in Moose Jaw. Later, Blowtorch traveled to Vancouver as the major attraction of the Saskatchewan Pavilion at Expo 86. As Swift Current celebrated its centennial in 2014, Blowtorch was transported back to its home community for the Coming Home exhibition at the Swift Current Museum, reunited with local residents while spurring memories of the past. I think it's kind of like an old car. 
Uh, when you got old cars and stuff there, people have an attachment to them because they're a part of the past. And I think that this horse, for those people, and there's getting to be less of them who have ever seen it. And it would have been really interesting. I thought one time it would be really interesting to get on a horse and ride around that museum. Because <laughs> it probably still would run. I, I probably might have to do a carburetor on it, but I'm pretty sure it's not seized or anything, so it probably would still do exactly what it did when I rode it, you know. They preserved it pretty well, I, and I think they have. When people come in there and see that, most everything today is plastic, so when you see something metal, I like that. I'm a welder, so <laughs> it's kind of fun to see that. Potarch is very charming. It has its, its own personality, its own characteristics. Uh, the paint quality, I mean, he's a, He's a horse that has the kind of exaggerated uh, coloration that, that relates to a horse, but in, in uh, Blowtorch's case, it's uh, just a little more extreme. The, the, uh, the shapes of the heads, the, the joints that are welded together uh, are, are obvious. You can see the technology. So I think in uh, you know, so many ways, it's uh, kind of a wonderful sculptural piece to enjoy. A reflection of Swift Current's past, honoring former residents and their lasting legacy. While for some, spurring feelings of gratitude of a treasured life experience. The skills that I learned while I was at McIntyre's over that five years I was there have been with me for the, all of my life. Yeah, and they're probably instilled into my children now who are running my welding business and medicine out there now too. So yeah, it's kind of interesting that if you take time to train somebody properly, and those things won't leave them, you know. So the young people that think, well, let's go for the money. I think go for the talent, go for the learning, and the money will come later. You know, that's where it's at. It's not, not that I want paid now. It's if you go there and work and learn your skill well, you'll still be there. Blowtorch, a mechanical horse which stemmed from the imagination of one man's creativity, and in turn captured the hearts of generations to come through its use of simple mechanics and its characteristics of folk art culture.